Okay, boys and girls, today we are taking a look at my frontline knives. Now, what I mean by frontline knives is essentially the knives that spend the most time with me when I go outdoors. These are essentially the go-to blades. The other kind of uh, point to point out here for frontline blades is that there will be two different types. There's essentially the pocket knives, which we'll get into, and the neck knives. I will usually run one of these pocket knives and one of these neck knives at the same time, essentially allowing me to handle a variety of different tasks depending on what I need out of my knife and what objectives I'm aiming after. So let's jump right into it. Okay, so these neck knives you'll probably be pretty familiar with, so we will talk about them in just a few seconds. We're gonna talk about these pocket knives first. Now, you might be wondering to yourself, or maybe scratching your head, these don't really look like pocket knives, and to the traditional pocket, you are absolutely correct. However, I tend to run the El Raven Vita Pro pants and on the Vita Pros they have a specific pocket that is designed to hold especially Mora knives but they're designed to hold the sheath of your knife while you can draw out your main blade. So taking that in pocket and using it as an advantage I usually will end up running one of these three blades and these three in particular the Conspool, the Bushcraft Black and the Condor Pterosaur tend to work very well in that pocket and these three specific blades do work very well with that pocket there are other knives that work with it but these three are reasonably budget reasonably good blades that just so have to work very well with that pocket so that's why these are frontline blades in that regard now, like I mentioned, the bottom one is the Conspool, then we have the Bushcraft Black, and lastly, we have the Condor Pterosaur. So how I might choose one of these blades largely depends on what I'm after. However, these two do have a lot of similarities, but the biggest reason why I might choose one of these two is for the rubberized handle being very temperature neutral. If I'm going out on a very cold day, that is certainly an advantage. If I need stainlessness, then I will certainly lead towards the Conspool. And if I want a very well-rounded bushcrafting general purpose camp knife, then usually I will choose the pterosaur in more temperate temperature ranges things such as 30 above and up the other reason why the pterosaur tends to be a little bit more left out in colder and wetter environments is also because it does not have a treated blade or rather a coated blade at all so this one is not coated but it is stainless this one is carbon but it is well coated with its dlc coating and therefore it is a little bit more weather resistant in that regard so overall, these two blades are my go-tos for cold weather and inclement weather. This one is a go-to for summer months when I want a very well-rounded and very good to use, very nice to use, fun to use uh, bushcrafting blade. And once again, these all serve as essentially backups or secondaries to the knives that we're about to talk about. Okay, so those are the pocket knives. Now let's talk about the mainline or frontline neck knives. So these are the three, the BRK Bushcrafter, the JBK Layman, and the MAK, sorry, 3DK MAK. These guys are certainly shown a lot or showcased a lot on the channel because these are my go-tos, these are my favorites, and I certainly love talking about them. But essentially, when it comes to talking about these blades, as far as what I pick when, essentially, the best way to put it is this blade, the uh, JBK Layman, is my fine tooth blade. This is the blade that I'm going to choose, especially if I'm going to be running a thicker, stronger kind of secondary or pocket blade, if you will. Uh, this is the blade that I'm going to choose for very fine tasks. The primary reason why is it has a very thin tip. It is convex ground, and that means that this is a very slicey, very thin, very fine blade. Now, it is capable of batoning in harder use applications, but being that the tip is unsupported and very thin, of course, that does add a certain level of mindfulness that you need to have when approaching the tip so that it doesn't get damaged or broken. So this one is a little bit more 
on the lighter duty side, but still capable of doing a great many things. However, the nice part about it is it's good at doing fine tasks. So carving and skinning are gonna be where it's at. Now the next one, the BRK Bushcrafter, is a general purpose kind of in between both of these knives. This one is not necessarily the most fine toothed, but also not the heaviest duty. And this one is just a well-rounded multi-purpose camp knife. Once again, not the best at the small fine detailed work, but is a really solid general purpose bushcraft blade. And with added strength, uh, this is the, my go-to blade or my frontline pick if I need something that is multi-role compatible. Now, the last one is the 3DK MAK. Now, don't get me wrong, this one certainly is actually pretty fine-toothed itself, but this one is probably the heaviest duty of them all, being that it has a flat grind and actually a similar thickness to both of them. This guy is pretty tough, pretty robust, and pretty built up. But at the same time, once again, it is a reasonably fine tooth blade but still the heaviest duty of these three and so if I'm looking for a blade where more use is going to be predicted or more abuse will be predicted to be put on that blade then I will grab the MAK because it is going to be able to handle the tasks best and this is probably the most robust of all three of these knives. So that is generally what I will pick it is if I need a more robust blade than either of these two but still want something quality, capable, and very good at doing multiple and many camp tasks. So essentially that gives you guys a pretty good idea of when I will choose what I'm going to choose. Uh, these guys are all good at, in their own regard and they all have slightly different capabilities and capacities that they function best in, similar to the different pocket knives. That is why they have different applications, different roles in different jobs in the wilderness. Anyways guys, hopefully you enjoyed this video. Hopefully enjoyed seeing these frontline blades, how I run them, and when I choose which one. So now you can tell whenever you see a certain particular knife in a video, whether I'm just packing it along, using it in action, or explaining it in the future. As always guys, God bless and I'm out.